Yo, welcome guys to another Diablo 4 patch rundown. This time I have for you the mid-season patch, which is usually the biggest patch of the season, bringing the craziest changes. We are not seeing like major crazy stuff this time, but we are having really interesting topics here. The patch will hit next Monday on the 17th, and let's get right to it. First up, we are having an increase of the healing of the healing potion which I think is much needed because in the end game they are mostly useless. But even though they are increasing that by 200%, which sounds a lot, classes um, like the Sorcerer, which has a really bad HP scaling, they play with like 30 to 40k HP. And if they're increasing the healing like this to like what? 2k, 3k, 4k? No? It's still irrelevant for the amount of um, health that you're getting. And if you're looking at classes like a barbarian, you will see that it's even worse because they go like 100k plus. No? So yeah, not a real um, helpful change right there. Maybe they are doing this um, as a preparation to not put it in on top of the immortality, which is currently available. We will see and I will keep you updated there. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion needed. Currently, 98.9% .9 of the people watching my videos are not subscribed. Even though we are reaching nice view numbers of up to 20k and sometimes almost close to 400 likes. So I would like to offer you a deal. You watch this video all the way to the end and if you learned something new in this guide, you have to subscribe. Then we are having a legendary aspect, which I don't know why they're even touching it. Because this aspect, if you remember, is the one that if you get hit, a bubble will appear. That aspect was really good when we had the first beta and you could only go to level 25. But now it has like a barrier of like 9k or something like this. And um, like the barrier is completely like you cannot use it to survive like a high pit or like play around that item. Because it um, has a 10 second downtime in between even if it's getting to 20 seconds. Now the change that I think is the most interesting out of all of them and that's the Andariel's visage right there. Um, important to understand here is like Poison Nova increased damage by 50% is already huge but this change that the Poison Nova now spawns on enemies and not on your side this is where the actual um, where the actual damage boost is laying and let me show you this with my professional paint skills right here so let's say this is you you are that little noob and you want to fight the monsters and you will get your lucky hit procs or andariels as procking then the damage will be around you and you need to be close to monsters to um to actually get the damage this little fella right here yeah he can stay on range no? and use like a range skill to proc it and then the Nova will proc around the monsters. And of course, this allows you to go at a range distance, no? which is already really nice. But it also allows to the Novas to be stacking over it. So you will attack that monster, you will create a Nova. As soon as you see the lucky hit procs, you will go for the next monster and try to hit another Nova. And then you can have those overlapping effects where your damage is basically double, tripled, and so on. So next up, we are having the um, Ring of Starless Guys that I want to talk about. This is um, giving a really nice increase in damage and resource cost reduction and will make builds like Blizzard on the Sorcerer, for example, a lot more viable. Then the Paragon board where these requirements for non-main stats are reduced from 90 to 60. And I prepared um, a little um, example here so you get it. And um, if you're looking at this rare note, we are getting a bonus effect at 170 dex. And every time you attach the new board, this requirement is getting increased by 90. So if we are looking here, it's going up to 260. And this makes it really hard if you're playing like an eight board setup or a seven board setup to get any of the bonus effects in the um, later stages of your Paragon board. And with this change, 
the second port, for example, would go to 230. The third one would go to um, 290. It's way, way, way easier to get those. And I'm pretty sure people will have to rearrange the Paragon boards, but it will give a great damage boost right there. Now for the classes, I'm not too familiar with the other classes except Sorcerer, but um, there's a couple of things that I want to say. Um, I think this change here about the Whirlwind is quite interesting because um, I think it was already one of the best speed farm builds besides Sorcerer with like zero limit um, cooldown and they are buffing it. Same with Flay where I think they had like crazy high pit clears with like up to 79 billion damage like free build um, like ticks and stuff like this. So interesting um, where this is going to be going. If we are taking a look at the Druid and we are looking at the changes for Pulverize right here, I think that we might be seeing another Overpower Pulverize build stepping up. And yeah, let's see who is figuring out the first Pulverize build that's clearing the high pits. For the Necromancer, I do want to skip that and we're going to go over the nerfs for the Necromancer later. Because I got to say, Necromancer is the only class in that patch that actually got hit. I would say everyone else got buffs, only Necromancer got nerfs. So for the Rogue, um, it's most likely that the Twisting Plates build will be viable. I've only already saw Woodyo doing a guide on it, I have not watched it yet. But um, I think those changes on so many things might be able to get like a decent melee rope going again. Then we are having the Sorcerer. The Sorcerer is having um, huge changes, in my opinion, regarding survivability. And um, like... I would say the biggest issue is, and I think I'm like a real hater of it, is that the current meta on Sorcerer is um, you can push, push really high pits, but to do so, you get flame shield um, points on your chest, you have to get like high cooldown reduction, and you have to increase with tempering the flame shield duration, which will basically allow you to permanently have it up. And um, I think this meta is not fun to play. I think um, Immortality should be only available for a short duration of time and with a long cooldown. So you have to choose wisely when you use something like this to uh, out move a uh, to to dodge a skill rather than walking or actually dodging by moving. And um, I think stuff like this should be used so you can increase your effective DPS uptime and not like only to survive in a dungeon. And Sorcerer is currently not able to do anything without that um, little trick, cause the ice armor barrier was 30% of the base life of the Sorcerer. And that means base life is not scaled with like HP percent or anything. So you, you had no way to increase that basically besides going to level 100. And now it's 25% of our maximum life, which means we are getting the Paraborn Gumboard scaling, we can get scaling from rubies and our armor and all of that onto our barrier, which now means that barrier could be viable to clear high pits actually with like a tanking version. But I also want to say, I think this is more like a preparation patch to get um, Flame Shield out of the game. Is, I don't think it's quite there yet to replace it, but I think they are starting to get into this direction also with things like um, like defensive stats that they are increased and like damage taken is being reduced right here. Like all of the changes they're doing are slowly going into that direction. Um, something that I am quite happy about for my personal build is actually the ESO's ferocity change to from 5% to 10% because I was missing about 3% crit rate and I could not get a Crater FX crit um, cloves that I did not prick. I already pricked like 3.5 billion cloves and um, to squeeze out that last percentage that I was missing, 
but now like I get it for free, thanks God, and the uh, um, gloves that I already have with greater FX int and the tech speed are now best in slot, so I don't have to do anything anymore. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, here, probably the only change in the whole patch that um, I don't understand at all. I cannot see why it's there. And this is the increase of shatter damage. Yeah, I think like the, the highest pushing build at the moment is the sorcerer with the immortal, but he can only do that with like one weird interaction. And this is by introducing shatter to its fireball immortality build or like the serpent where you can draw in the, the monsters and pixel them. And um, yeah, the, the, um, the effect that the shatter has, like once you kill a monster, it deals damage to the other ones. That's one thing off the side, no? which allows you to deal high damage. But the downside on this is that play style is basically fishing. So you will have to play so many pits and over and over again and you will have to find the boss that is spawning ads. So you can use those ads, pull them to the boss, kill the ads, and the ads are basically dealing the damage onto the boss. This is your strategy. And this is dealing high damage, but not only the way it is intended, because there is like one weird interaction, which makes it that damage that would have been dealt to the, um, like to, to the trash mobs that you're carrying, and it's overkilling them, yeah, is then redirected on the thing that is still living. So basically, it's not only that shatter damage, it's also that overkill damage that makes that, uh, that like, crazy. And I would have personally thought that they would have removed that overkill damage. And, yeah, the reality was more like that they increased the shatter damage. So I'm not sure what the idea is behind that. Now, let's talk about um, the last things. There's three more things and then we are done. Um, they do want to make the end game more smoother. That means they have reduced the scaling in the pits below tier 60, so more players can go and farm the Neferion, which I think is totally valid mid-season. Um, there's no reason to gatekeep people anymore. All the races to like being fast are over. Now it's all we are at min-maxing stage of the majority of the players. Um, here all tormented bosses have their health reduced. I did not feel like that they were hard to do, but um, yeah, if they want to reduce it, like I don't care. If I now farm bosses and it takes, um, instead of like, like 30 seconds, it takes like 25 seconds, yeah, I get a bit of a better farm per hour, but it's not that relevant. Um, here, this is the reason why I did not want to talk about the Necro previously. And I think this change right here about the Holy Bolt is the reason why Necromancer got such a crazy nerf. Because Necromancer was actually not able to clear really high pits um, without the usage of Holy Bolt. And that was due to a bug that if the minions procced Holy Bolt, um, it was like for some reason scaling wrong and this is being removed now so i think that single target damage of the necromancer is still viable but the um, aoe damage that they need to actually get to the boss in the high pits i think they will be slowed down quite a lot maybe there is a permanent immortality blood mist build that um, will pop up and um, take the spot here we will see